Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Thirteen, Periodic Motion, Video One. Today's topic is describing oscillations. The objectives are: know that all oscillations have a stable equilibrium position. Understand that oscillation can occur only when there is a restoring force on the body. Be able to describe oscillations in terms of amplitude, period, frequency, and angular frequency. Periodic motion or oscillation is any kind of motion repeat themselves over and over. Here are two examples of periodic motion. One is pendulum; the other one is an object oscillating on a spring. A body that undergoes a periodic motion always has an equilibrium, stable equilibrium position. So the body is oscillating because there is a restoring force or torque always pulling it back to its equilibrium position. When a body is moving away, to describe oscillation on a spring, we need our, our coordinate system. Origin O or x equals to zero is the equilibrium position. To describe the displacement, we always describe displacement relative to this origin、um, equilibrium position.、Uh, another thing we want to、um, Defy is the net force on this object. The net force, according to Hooke's law, equals to kx. But since f and x are always in the opposite direction, so we have f equals a negative kx. From this net force, we can define acceleration. Acceleration is net force over mass. Since force and x are always in the opposite direction, so acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite direction. Whenever the body is displaced from its equilibrium position, the spring force tends to restore it to the equilibrium position. We call a force with this character a restoring force. Oscillation can occur only when there is a restoring force tending to return the system to equilibrium. Amplitude, period, frequency, and angular frequency. These are vocabularies to. To describe oscillation, the amplitude of motion, denoted by capital A, is the maximum magnitude of displacement from equilibrium, or the maximum of displacement x. The SI unit is meter. Cycle is one complete round trip from positive A to negative A and back to positive A. O from O to A back to O to negative A then back to O. Period is the time of one cycle. It is always positive. Its unit is a second. Frequency is the number of cycles in a unit of time. It is also always positive. Its unit because it's one over time. It's so its unit is one over second, and we have a new name for it. It's called Hertz. The new vocabulary is angular frequency. We use omega. So omega we had、uh, learned before is angular speed. So now here is angular frequency. Angular frequency is defined as two pi times the frequency. So omega equals two pi f. Its unit is radian per second. So same as angular speed. So the relationship between f t is f equals to one over t. They are inversely related. The relationships between omega f and t. Are omega equals two pi f, and it, because f equals one over t, so omega also equals two pi over t. Take a look at our example. An ultrasonic transducer used for medical diagnosis oscillates at a frequency of six point seven megahertz. How much time does each oscillation take, and what is angular frequency? Well, um. How much time is a period? Period equals one over frequency, so that gives you one point five times ten to the negative seven hertz. Mega means ten to the six, and micro is ten to the negative six. That's why it's point one five times、um, microseconds. The other one is omega equals to two pi f, so that gives you two pi times f, four point two times ten to the seven radian per second. That's the unit for angular frequency. Test your understanding. So, for each of the following value of bodies x velocity v x and x acceleration v x, please 
whether its displacement x is positive, negative, or zero. So remember a, how is a related to x? a equals negative kx times m. So a is always opposite in the direction as x. So x is always in the opposite direction of acceleration a. So when a equals to zero, x equals to zero. So the first one, so it doesn't matter what your v is. You just look at a. So if a is greater than zero, x is less than zero. a is less than zero, x is greater than zero. So here is x is negative, positive, positive, x equals to zero because ax equals to zero. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.